Well, hello everyone again. Welcome to Second and Saints. Ross Jackson alongside with me, John Hendricks, coming at you with another episode. And I couldn't imagine we have anything to talk about today. It's probably going to be a really, really boring show. So just, uh, you know, settle in and such. But but seriously, though, we got tons of stuff to talk about, Ross. But first <laughs> of all, man, how you doing? How was your weekend? All that fun stuff. And uh, are you kind of geared up and ready for all this new Saints season stuff? Yeah, man, I'm I'm doing great. I got a fresh cup of coffee right here. Everything like ready to roll. Like I'm I'm doing yeah. good. Uh, you know, so I, I'm I'm ready. I've been waiting for free agency to get here. I got here a little bit faster than I thought it was going to get here. I'll say the same thing again when we get to the draft in a month. <laughs> uh, but other than that, man, I'm great. How are you? I'm good, man. So you know, this uh, the weather is continuing to be like a little bit of um, a, a mind of its own. It's kind of nice. I like this kind of weather, but it's mm -hmm. just make up your mind is it gonna be cold is it gonna be hot you know and then you know with the time change man i got kids so it's it's even worse when you have kids you know what i'm saying yeah, I mean, so that. it's it's just tough it's a struggle bus but starting to get there recovering all that fun yeah. stuff oh yeah fine but man the uh saints let's get into it a lot of stuff to talk about when it comes to the saints obviously the new league year will open on Wednesday at three o'clock, but yesterday on uh, we had the legal tampering period. I put mm -hmm. in marks and it pretty much ha everything had flew. Right. And so for the saints, if, if you've been following us, if you've been reading us and stuff, we knew that this team wasn't going to play in the top tier. Um, we knew that was just not going to happen. Right. They're not going to go big game hunting right now. They are somebody that's going to wait in the shadows. You look at some of their signings last year, it matches, uh, they lost a couple free agents. We'll get into that. But I think the biggest thing that we could probably start with is Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. Um, a big deal, $180 million deal. He yeah. gets $100 million guaranteed, four years. Baker resigns in the NFC South. Carolina's kind of losing a lot of defensive parts. I think this NFC South division just gets a little bit more interesting. But, man, they're paying a lot of money for a guy who's coming off of a major injury. Yeah, look, it's gonna be a. It feels like it's gonna be a three man race, three team race for the uh, division this year around. Because Carolina is kind of just punting on everything. They said, no, we don't need two first round picks. We'll take a second and a fifth in a year. That'll be fine. Everything Oof. they like moved on from all that kind of stuff. But I, I just think that you know when you look at the Kirk Cousins signing and everything that I know he's coming off of an injury, but it's an Achilles injury. Usually, when that ends up being okay, it's very okay after they move on. It's not like an ACL to where it feels like it gets weaker and weaker and weaker, or you know certain injuries that feel like they get weaker. And weaker and weaker usually achilles is kind of healed and then you're you're good we've seen that with you know players here in new orleans before guys yep. coming off of that all that uh you know sheldon i think it was sheldon rankins had that if i recall correctly everything yeah, i think and alex so, okafor was another one that had yeah one too. yeah there's been oh, plenty yeah. of that alex yeah. okafor my goodness uh, Ayo, that's a pull. Back, man. i love that <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah you know i think it's one of those things where like you're you're still comfortable giving somebody at the most important position on the field that type of contract and if you really look at the contract it's effectively a two-year deal i mean the first two years yeah. are completely guaranteed 90 million dollars completely guaranteed over those first two years makes it 45 per year there but you, know, you got 10 million dollars guaranteed in the third year there's some restructure money that's available there in terms of roster bonuses and things like that you can imagine that that's all going to get restructured terry fontenot going to the school of accounting with the new Orleans saints. Uh, mm -hmm. and so I think that like, you'll see some of those things that, that happen, but I don't think that they're done taking their swings at quarterback, whether it's in this year's draft or next year's draft, but the, for the short term, like Kirk cousins plays well when he plays against new Orleans, he he's a good player. He was before the Achilles injury looked really, really good. I think he was like 18 touchdowns to five interceptions, 200, 2,331 yards, if I remember correctly and all that. So, um, solid player and, and probably the best case scenario for, uh, Atlanta in terms of landing a veteran quarterback that isn't, you know, somebody that's got conflict around them, like a Justin Fields, where, you know, what, what can he do? What can't he do kind of stuff? Like he's a steady quarterback that makes good decisions and can make life hard for opposing defenses. And they've got good weapons there. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the move that has impacted the NFC South the most so far this offseason. Yeah. And with cousins, look, here's the thing. 
Atlanta's not going to be picking top 10 with Kirk Cousins. It's probably just not going to happen. I think that that's also another thing to think about is that, look, he's going to be a, a, a guy that's going to get him to at least a respectable record when the end, when the end of it is all is here. And so, yep. I mean, Cousins being in the NFC South, they got some weapons offensively. They're going to have a, a, a new coach at the helm with Raheem Morris. Ryan Nielsen was, was out after a year, and obviously he took a, a – promotion so that's a, a different scenario as opposed right. to him just getting the boot but you know they have some pieces there to potentially be a better team and you know for the saints they're focused a little bit more on keeping some of their owns and we'll talk that in a second but i think tampa is also another great example like they could the worst thing they could have done is let baker mayfield go but with locking up mike evans for the next couple of years i think it made a lot of sense because you can't lock up a guy like mike evans and just not have a quarterback for him to throw to <laughs> right. and such. So this didn't make sense but you know tampa's yeah. losing some pieces and such but you know new orleans it's it's really on them they've got to to prove themselves and of course everybody's going to chase the shiny red ball i mean, i get it look the saints team they haven't won the division since 2020 I don't think I'd pick them as the favorites right now either, just because mm -hmm. they just haven't proven themselves that they can get out of their own way. And so I think it with the NFC South, it's it's a real interesting turning point. And of course, this time of year, free agency, everybody wants to glorify the guys who are paper champions and crown them. It's like, oh man, this team had the best free agency. They're definitely going to get in the postseason. Newsflash, that's probably usually not the case. That's mostly not the case of these teams, right? And so yeah. for the Saints... They're kind of sitting back in the shadows. They've lost a couple pieces, but let's start with some of the more important things. Demario Davis, mm -hmm. new deal. He was going into the last year of his contract. He's here for the next two years. Most likely will retire with the Saints. Tyron Matthew also redid his deal. He's got two years now. And so I think the writing feels like it's on the walls. They're really trying this two-year window with both of these guys to try to make an impact. You know, there was some – let me get on my soapbox for a second. Uh, Guys, y'all yeah. have yeah. got to y'all have got to to pay attention to who stuff comes from. I'm telling you, it's it's the aggregation, the stuff on Facebook, but like people falling for this Michael Pinnock stuff, but the Demario Davis trade rumors, like all that was made up and fabricated. I can guarantee you 100 percent that that was never an option. It was never going to happen, and it didn't happen. But it's just we're in the season of if you throw a carrot out to somebody, people yep. are going to eat it up and run with it. Like I'm still seeing this Pinnock stuff from made up from this fake account. Like it's just crazy. Mm. But anyways, off my soapbox, two really important moves, Ross defensively, two big respectable leaders in the room. And obviously Dem DeMario's there, their heart and soul of this team, yeah. uh, heart and soul of the defense leader on defense, extremely well respected. He's still playing at a high level, but mm -hmm. there's some concerns obviously maybe between the guys behind him. Do you like the move with the Mario and Tyron? And what are your thoughts personally on, you know, the outlook now? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think these were two of the better players on this team's defense, along with Paulson and Debo, um, you know, and Carl Granderson uh, at the end of or, or throughout the season last year. I, I think the thing that I like most about this, too, is that you're keeping two like there was all this conversation around, you know, culture change and, you know, challenging the culture and all this. Stuff. You're, you're, you're keeping two guys that are the cornerstone of the culture that you want. Uh, you know, and I think that those things happening and the timing that they happen speaks loudly as well, because it kind of coincided with all the Michael Thomas stuff and everything. And so I think that like you get away from that and then you get to, you know, these guys like Tyron and these guys like Demario. And it just tells you, like, regardless of what we think about it, it tells you what the organization thinks in terms of yeah. who they want on their team yeah. and who they want, you know, how they want to define their culture moving forward. So I think that keeping two guys like Tyron and Demario goes further than the production on the field. Although the production on the field is is up there. In the last two years, Demario Davis has set and tied his career high in sacks with six and a half. He's been a 100 plus ta uh, tackler, uh, combined tackler, every year that he's been in New Orleans. He's been an all pro or second team all pro just about every year as well since 2019. Uh, and then you look at uh, Tyron Matthew, who you know was tied for the lead in interceptions this past year, played with three, four different safeties next to him in, in a tandem throughout the season, is the you know communicative backbone of the defense and everything. Like you can really just feel you can see where it is that these two guys have their on-field impact, but the off-field locker room impact and community impact, I'm sure, uh, is incredibly yeah. important to this organization as well these are guys that are franchise defining these aren't just good players yeah. these are franchise defining guys yeah these guys don't grow on trees and look mm -hmm. we talked about it last week again we're not going to ever claim to know but we know everything in the world right we just no. don't we but we did discuss last week about the potential of is it time to look for a demario replacement and mm -hmm. you know this team lost zach bond that's 
really a, a, an area that I think has moved to the forefront that they're going to have to look at the linebacker position. Of course, Lonnie yeah. Johnson Jr. He signed with the Texans. Look, the Saints tried to get a deal done at the end of it all. Lonnie got more money from Houston and he was able to go back to the team that drafted him. And so, you know, this type of fallout is going to happen, but, you know, sticking with what we're looking at in the saints um, before we talk about the departures, other important moves that have been made. Obviously we told you again to Rashid he was an exclusive rights free agent. That was mm-hmm. never going to be a case. If he was going to hit the market, they tendered him as an exclusive rights free agent. They only have three wide receivers on the mark on the roster right now. Um, Lynn Bowden, he was not going to be tagged under that restricted tag. And so right. for those who might be concerned, confused a little bit. So use Blake Gilligan as a, a point of reference. So uh, Bowden was on IR for one of those years. And so that is what a, counts towards his accrued seasons that's why he was a restricted free agent and not an exclusive rights free agent and so Mm -hmm. and of course at the rising cost of tags it doesn't make sense to keep some of these guys whereas last time you know five six years ago it's a no-brainer because it just doesn't cost you a lot of money and so the team wants to bring Bowden back he's obviously still recovering from off-season surgery he was on one of those like Neil uh Neil oh the scooters at HBCU combine and stuff but he's in great spirits so he's just not not ready at the moment, but I'm sure he will. And the saints picked him up in June, you know, I had a training camp. And so, but again, now you look at it, uh, your wide receiver position, you only have three on the roster. That is like mission critical for this team. They have got to address this position like now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the spot where you, I mean, and, and look, they're going to, and I think the thing to remember is that this is a team that brings in 12 to 13 wide receivers in training camp every single year. So they're not going to sit like, you could expect nine to 10 signings, you know, nine, let's call it seven to 10 signings at the position Mm -hmm. for this team. Some of which will take place during the free agency period. Some of which will be acquired during the draft. Some of which could be well after the free agency period, like Lynn Bowden. They also had like Kiki Cootie and all these other guys that were in, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, training camp and everything late last year too. So they'll continue to kind of build that out and figure out what that is. I think it's tough to keep Lynn Bowden on the uh, restricted free agent tag because the cheapest one is $3 million. And that's just not what you're looking to spend at that spot. And for that role, he was here on a, you know, veteran minimum deal last year. I think you would expect him to be back on the same kind of deal in 2024 and so just because they say no to the tender doesn't mean they're saying no to the player there is still an opportunity for a reunion there it's just not going to be at the price point of something that's pre-fixed by the nfl and other contracts given to other positions and all these other things it's going to be and this is one of the reasons why the saints stay out of the first wave of free agency usually usually it's going to be a contract that they build very specifically and that they're very precise about in terms of what the amounts are. They don't want to be in a situation to where their contract agreements are being dictated by the offers of other teams and by the you know average of this, that, and the other that's being taken to make these tenders, these tags, things like that. It, it, it makes a ton of sense. And I would expect that even with Rashid Shahid getting the exclusive rights tag, which was only like $980,000, um, that that's probably going to be something that they use as a temporary placeholder and then i could see them giving a two-year deal as they like to do with this kind of stuff they did it with carl granderson before he got his larger contract they did it with juan johnson before last year i could see them doing something like that again here with uh rashid G too yeah he'll move into that restricted conversation after this year and so again it's it's I, it, they're gonna end up doing right by him i mean but mm-hmm. you know you pay him a little bit extra in that restricted tag and it makes sense um you know one of the things that jonathan kind of stole my thunder on you also got to remember guys that they added after the draft uh shaq davis he was an undrafted guy now he's in philly i understand that john mm-hmm. trey kirkland was a guy that came over from the xfl you know you look at the ufl as an opportunity too and some of these wide receivers are just going to be again we've kind of talked about it uh, there's going to be more cap casualties again. I, I keep Renfro. dropping it. I, Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro. I think it's all but going to happen. Right. But they still need to find a possession receiver. But I think what's interesting to me is the wide receiver market yesterday was like nothing. Right. You had, yeah, you had two what, signings. Gabe they're both by the same and, team. <laughs> yeah. Gabe Davis went and then uh, it was another Devin one. That, one of the, yeah. Devin Duvernay, one of the guys mm-hmm. I thought could have been a potential target for the saints because of the Keith Williams connection. But um, you know, it's yeah. pretty quiet and the running back market's one of the things, but in, in the offensive line market has been outrageous so Dude. far. And it makes those contracts with like Cesar Ruiz and other ones look really, really good. But man, oh people are getting paid stupid money right now. Like yeah, it's insane. Money. We're talking this about a position. Industry. 
Yeah, we're talking about a position that jumped like six million dollars per Ooh. year in terms of its in terms of its average annual value, which is insane. And so the yeah. Saints getting out a year ahead on Caesar Ruiz, yeah, huge, right? Uh, it, that potentially impacts a little bit of the Andrews Pete negotiation, though. And it's that that becomes more of that conversation: Are they going to pay him? Like, is is not not the Saints, but whoever, uh, or mm-hmm. the Saints or whoever. Um, is Andrew Speak going to earn left tackle money or is he going to earn left guard money? And I think in either case, that price point might be too high if you're in New Orleans. And so you're looking at, can you keep James Hurst around and, you know, uh, get him ready? Or is, you know, Nick Saldaveria ready to to compete for a starting left guard spot? All these other things. I think you're going to end up looking for a new starter uh, at left guard over on that side. Uh, technically, right? James Hurst technically started there last year and they were perfectly mm-hmm. comfortable with that. But, you know, that's what where Andrew Speed has been since he was drafted. Yeah. And so the Saints right now, they're about uh, almost seven million uh, over to get the, the cap number and stuff. And they're going to get there. They have yeah, to be um, two of the, the restructures that I think are coming. Uh, Ram check is the top one. That's kind of a no brainer. They could save almost twelve million dollars of that. One of the other ones I was told that is is James Hurst. That is one that they're looking at kind of tweaking that contract. So I would expect that to come out soon enough um, as far as it goes. And then they haven't touched Taysom or Kamara to make space. And so this is an interesting time. I know everybody's on pins and needles because they're thinking, what are the Saints doing? Why are they not doing it? A, they were never going to go with these top tie, top tier free agents. They're going to kind of say, okay, look, if you start at the top roster, maybe go down to the middle part, and that might be where they start shopping and stuff. And again, doesn't mean they're not going to try. I mean, there are pass rushers that are out there. There are players oh, yeah. that they're going to look at and stuff. You know, Avante Maddox is one of the the rumored or reported visits that the Saints are going to happen or have happened, and so. Um, we'll talk about that now is, is Avante Maddox coming in for a visit. You know, he's been hurt the past couple of years, what 13 games is, is all he's been able to muster for last year, but he is a guy that can play both on the outside and in the slot. And we've talked about it on here too. Uh, moving Alante back outside is not off the table. So if they can't resign yet, um, and if they do trade Marshawn, you know, which is another thing we c- can get into, but it's not ruled out that Alante is stuck in the slot. And if they got Avante Maddox, he could be their slot guy. Now, a lot has to happen between now and then. But mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the Maddox visit? And what do you make of it? Because everybody is is makes of it, you know, this time of year. This person gets released. The Saints should go look at this guy. What do you think? Yeah, I think if, if Avante Maddox is signed, he could be good depth in the slot. Th- that's the way that I look at it. Um I, I don't know that I would trust him to be a starter in your system because of his inability to stay healthy. And that has been a track record for him. I know he started, I know he played 16 games three years ago, but that was three years ago. And even before that, he had some injury concerns and things like that too. Uh, so he has been a player that's been pretty good there, or had like one really solid season in the slot, but hasn't really been able to stay out on the field. And I'm not trusting a five foot nine corner to play a perimeter corner right. spot in this division with. The Mike Evanses and the the Drake Londons and uh, whoever's whatever's going to happen in Carolina, we'll see. But like with the Chris Godwins, like all that other stuff, like I'm not trusting that uh, in this situation. And knowing that you could be seeing more wide receiver talent come in, big body wide receiver talent coming in through this draft, five foot nine corner on the boundary is not going to be my way to go. So I, I look at it the way that I look at this visit is uh, the Saints lose. You know, Ugo Amadi, right? He's out there on the market right now. Do they bring him back? They can, but they could also look at other options. And I think Avante Maddox is one of those guys that you're looking at as somebody that has a lot of experience in the slot. Uh, There's not a very slot heavy um, kind of population when it comes to corners and safeties in this year's draft. And so you're looking for a guy that could potentially come in with veteran experience and then back up your slot. I think that it's an entirely disconnected thing from Marshawn Lattimore. The Marshawn Lattimore decision has to be its own decision, and it's not going to be preempted by you know a slot corner coming in that's only played twelve games in the last you know two seasons, thirteen if you include the wild card game last year. And so I, I just look at it as a potential looking to gather information on a potential replacement as a backup in the slot, and then if it turns into more than that, it turns into more than that. But as you said, there'd be a lot of things that have to happen between now and then. Yeah, and you're going to have to look at special teams guys, too. I mean, it's yep. just you lost Zach Vaughn. That's a big special teams piece. You're going to have to look at if you lose a guy like Yadam. That's another one to look at. 
we're live, so obviously I, I want to talk. We, Ross, we literally oh, just yeah. talked about this before we hit the air. Yeah. Jameis Winston is going to the Cleveland Browns in a one-year deal, according to Jordan Schultz. He is getting a deal worth $8.7 million. Um, we talked about this. Just like I said, literally talked about this. The interest was yeah. there. The Giants and Pillar Lee were interested. Uh, Titans were interested. But Jameis goes now to a spot where he could actually be the starter, right? Yeah, Deshaun Watson is not good. And so I I don't think that him going to Cleveland is one that he's going to be completely stuck behind uh, a quarterback. I think that there's a chance that he ends up being a starter and getting opportunities there. We saw the Cleveland Browns go through four different quarterbacks last year. They had to call uh, uh, Joe Flacco up out, of, uh, up out of, you know, I think the only thing Joe Flacco is a lead at right now is flight status. I'll just put it that way. And so like the way that they, they, they had to go through all that. Now they get an opportunity to have a guy that can, that they can actually turn to that can win them games. And it's good enough to be a starter in the league. Like, I think that's a good spot for him to land. And I don't, I think that there is a non-zero chance that he ends up starting games in 2024 in Cleveland. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, look, we talked to Jameis at the HBCU, uh, you know, the legacy mm -hmm. bowl. I mean, the guy, you know, he was around New Orleans. This is, he's such an easy person to root for in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? And so uh, he's there taking pictures of fans and giving people the time of day and stuff. And look, Jameis in the locker room, that's just stuff. That energy is going to be really hard to replace. And, and of course, now the Saints are going to have to find a backup. And, you know, I, I floated Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's going to yeah. Minnesota. Now Carson Wentz could be an option. Now it kind of moves the, the needle. Now the Saints really do need to look up for a backup. And so Jake Hayner is obviously still in the roster. You're employing this new offensive system. And so it just now creates another hole, if you will. But, you know, good for Jameis for, for cashing in a little bit and going to a situation where I, I think more so that he has a real legitimate chance to, to play and to start mm -hmm. for the Browns. And so, look, I, I always said that, what sucked is that year where he started, you know, so, so well for oh, this team man. and yeah. he got hurt against Tampa. We'll never know. We will we'll never know what Jameis would have mm -hmm. finished that year. He was on a good trajectory. I think he was playing extremely well. He was, he was, you know, doing some, some things that didn't really uh, please Sean Payton in some aspects, but it worked right. And they won mm -hmm. football games with Jameis. And so, Good for him. Moving on. Um, you know, that's the unfortunate part of free agency is you're going to yeah. lose good guys. And Jameis is one that's going to be really hard to replace, you know, ever since they got him um, to, to be behind Drew. It's it's just tough, tough business is what runs. But it makes sense at the end of the day. And, you know, now New Orleans is going to have to move that needle up. I don't think this is the year that you draft somebody. I really don't. I still stick to those guns. Um there's plenty of free agents that are going to be out there, guys that are going to be either linked to Clint Kubiak or the Kyle mm -hmm. Shanahan system. There's just so many ways that it could potentially go. Um, but, you know, losing guys is totally unfortunate. And with Jameis, look, again, we, we wish him nothing but the best. And, again, yeah. he's a guy that I think fans will – continue to follow with real marked interest to see where his career ends up and such. And so the only thing that bummer for him is that he's a guy from Birmingham. He wanted to probably stay closer to home and family, but mm -hmm. look, the, the city of Cleveland, they're getting a really good guy. That's going to be really active out there in the community and such, but he's a Southern guy. So I'm sure we'll, we'll see him soon enough. He'll, he'll be down here for the HBCU legacy. Oh ball. yeah. All that yeah. Fun He'll stuff. be out here I mean, for carnival season, Mardi Gras, yeah. all that. Like he loves New Orleans too much. He'll still be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and so we'll, we still wait. And again, for the saints, they have to figure it out. But of course we didn't touch on the most exciting, important news. The Saints signed a fullback. We did. Hey, hey. <laughs> so oh, I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Xander Horvath is mm. is a guy that they picked up. So two year deal um, is what they've got him for. I don't know if that totally dismisses Adam Prentice, but it's interesting because Horvath is a guy. Obviously, he was with the Chargers with Derek Foster. It's a different type of mold uh, from a fullback perspective as opposed to yeah. what they've kind of had in the past. Your thoughts on Horvath and then obviously coming into this offense, what he could potentially bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, real quick, before I jump to that, I do want to mention one, one thing about like quarterback for the saints. Of course. That, like, please. You know, obviously, obviously Jake Hayner is still on the roster, but I think you and I are on the same page that another veteran for at least one more year makes a lot of yeah. sense. I think a lot of people think about the backup quarterback only for the sake of the backup quarterback comes in. If the starting quarterback gets hurt 
And so you want to have somebody that can win you a game. We don't know if Jake Hayner is that guy. A lot of people seem to be convinced he might yeah. be. That's fine too. But I think the the other piece that you're looking at is like 90% of the time, the role of a backup quarterback is to be on the sideline, looking at photos, working with the quarterback, the starting yep. quarterback, helping to make him better. Can you find somebody that can do that? I think Jake Hayner has seen a little bit of NFL football for a year or a year minus four games. And then now you get the opportunity to really get him kind of up to speed on all that here. His second year, the game slows down, gets to see a little bit more things like that. So that's why I think there's value in the the veteran quarterback that could be on the sideline to help with that. A couple of guys that come to mind, Ryan Tannehill could be one. He's familiar with the wide zone system. It was run in Tennessee while he was there, all of that. I think that he could be a really interesting one. Josh Dobbs is another one that has been in and out of those mm. different systems. Uh, you know, I think everybody's going to kind of remember him as the guy that came in and, you know, did incredibly well uh, for the Minnesota Vikings on very short Austin. notice. Yeah. Until yes. And that, uh, until, you know, suspiciously after he played against the new Orleans saints, we know how that goes. Uh, but you know, these different things are, are all pieces of his story, but overall, like he's a vastly intelligent dude, understands the game of football incredibly well. He's played in a lot of different systems could be helpful there. And then Brandon Allen, uh, is another guy that is a San Francisco free agent that could be there. Yep. But my favorite potential here is that the Jaguars traded for Mac Jones. And now there's mm. going to be a competition between Mac Jones and CJ Beathard to see who backs up Trevor Lawrence. If CJ Beathard loses that battle during training camp, he could be a very late addition that ends up turning into a valuable asset for you as a backup that has familiarity yeah. with the Shanahan system, played in it in 2017 through 2020, and then could show up here in New Orleans and also has play experience, like starting experience as well. So those are the ones that I'm I'm really like looking at as possible stand-ins there. But um but you're right about Xander Horvath. The thing about him that makes him so different from Adam Prentice is that like when we talk, we, every, every time that we asked anybody about Adam Prentice or anytime anybody talked about Adam Prentice, the big thing that would always come up was, yeah, he's like, everybody talks about him like he's a sixth offensive lineman. They like him. He's right. sixth offensive, like sixth OL, all this other stuff. That's why they always like, Horvath is, is not that dude. <laughs> He's he's a lot more athletic. He's a you know he's a pass catcher out of the backfield. Does a lot of different stuff. So you look at all of it and then you go, okay, does that is is that the is that Kubiak's use check? You know what I mean? Uh, mm. I don't think we should go that far yet. No, we ain't never no. seen the dude take a snap <laughs> or anything like that. Nah. But but is he of the athletic? the plus athlete mold when it comes to fullback? Yes, and I think that that's something that could be exciting. Yeah, and, and of course, you got to wait and see. This is March, guys. We are not yeah, going to see. Yeah, he might not even football. be on the roster by the time. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's OTAs, <laughs> you know, mini camp, like all that stuff. And of course, he can take stuff with training camp somewhat with a grain of salt, somewhat that it does matter and such. And so I think that'll be something that obviously unveils itself. But again, we, we suspected with the new additions on the offensive coaching staff that there might be some things that this team gets away with or gets away from as far as what they need, as far as the, the prototypes or uh, what they need for this offense to be successful. And so I'm sure that is one that a lot of input was put in and it wasn't by chance. You're going to probably see some of these guys that were linked to other teams that get in. And so it's wait and see mode as always. And of course I know it's not that exciting, but the saints are a team that still uses a fullback They've used the fullback, gosh, man, what, over 10 plus years, 15 Goodness, plus years. Yeah. What, going back to Mike Carney? I mean, Mike you know, Carney, then they went to all these guys, Moon like, and, yeah. I mean, yeah, Jed Collins. I mean, Jed there Collins, was just yeah. too many of them that, that come out. Uh, the only one that didn't really work out was Alex Arma. I thought he was going to be yeah. somebody that might be a little bit better than what it was. Zach Line, that was another one. Zach Line, he was Always really good. Too. W. His W's, uh, W tweets and stuff, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. You lose people in free agency The saints. We're waiting to see what they're going to do. Obviously again, like we told, told you guys don't expect them to be in this top tier. They're guys that are going to work in the shadows. And of course this tampering period really to clarify that it's not like these players are talking directly to the teams. The teams are talking to the agents. So, mm -hmm. What happens is once you get out of this tampering period, when the new league year starts, then all bets are off. You can start seeing something. And of course, in this tampering period, nothing is a done deal until it's on the dotted line. So like we saw Will Lux Love was going Lux. to Jacksonville. Yep. And then he's like, nah, homie, wait a second. I'm actually going to stay in Denver. And he stayed on a two-year deal instead of a three-year deal. So those types of things do happen as well. And for some players, it's different because of what their status is and, and how they were released. And the running back market was crazy. Like Aaron Jones mm -hmm. and Josh Jacobs 
was a thing for like a second. And then, you know, Jones gets released. Now he gets picked up by Minnesota and Pollard's off to Tennessee. I mean, mm-hmm. it's we just saw Joe game. Mixon. Uh, yeah. They they brought in what Zach Moss in Cincinnati, and then yeah. now they're trading Joe Mixon to Tennessee to uh, Houston, the Texans, and everything. Yeah. And so it's it's yeah. crazy, it's crazy and exciting times. And of course, again, it just be patient because the things are going to happen. The Saints are going to get space created, and again, they're they're going to have a lot of players that they're going to try to resign again. Uh, guys like Malcolm Roach, he's a guy that's going to test the market, but he tested the market before, and and he's uh one that the saints have made an offer to, but, you know, maybe see what else is out there. And if uh, worst case, he comes back to the team and Jonathan Abram, another one that they're really ex- interested in resigning. Yeah. Again, you will see how that plays out. Yeah. Adam, they think they found a, that he's found a home in new Orleans. And so it's kind of a wait and see mode for some of these guys. And so they didn't bring Colin Saunders and, and Nathan Shepard in until a few days after the league year started. And again, those moves are going to happen. It's just, it's not going to be the guys that you want. They're not going to get a Derrick Henry. They're not going to get, you know, some of these marquee guys that are on here. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but talking you, more about the guys. Well, yeah, go ahead. Who, who do you think is the, who do you think would be like the biggest name that they would get that like, wouldn't be, that would be surprising, but not unreasonable. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I think I'm going to throw this out there. I think it's Daniel Hunter or Daniel oh. Hunter. That's Odell Beckham Jr. Those mm. are the two that I think of. Now, I, I, Daniel Hunter is going to get paid. I know that. The Saints could make it work. Yeah. It's just that would be the only big game. But they need a pass rusher. They want to get a pass rusher as they can. And the fact that the pass rusher market, the way it's shaped up, I don't know what's going to happen there. i just looking at yeah. Shaq Barrett just went to the Dolphins. And so this right. movie's going to happen. I, I know Daniel Hunter is going to get paid. But that's probably my pipe dream pie in the sky. Now, Odell yeah. Beckham Jr., I could see because because the Saints have been interested. They mm-hmm. need a possession wide receiver. They almost had him, uh, you know, a couple times these past couple that's of years. Right. Yeah. Keith Williams is in here. They need a guy that's going to be, uh, which we didn't even talk about Michael Thomas. We'll go there now, yeah. too. But, um, but I think Odell's a guy that if you can get him at a reasonable deal and sell him, you know, Jarvis Landry is a guy that comes to mind that came on board, but I think Odell still has some really good football left in him. I don't think he's going to be a guy that's going to get highly touted. You see the wide receiver market. Calvin Ridley is another one I might casually throw Calvin out. Calvin Ridley too. I like a lot as I, a potential. I think, I think, you know, that those are some guys to keep an eye on. But for me, I, I think Beckham Jr. And, and Ridley are probably two that I might say, maybe we're not thinking about them. Maybe we're not talking about them. Maybe those guys make sense. Yeah. My big one, my biggest one that I think is, that is, I feel like might be more possible than we think it is, is Justin Simmons. And mm. and maybe, and yeah, maybe yeah. that's, maybe I'm being crazy. Maybe nope, I'm being, you know, <laughs> but like the connections are there. Joe Woods, Marcus Robertson, like the connections are there. The need is there. Mm-hmm. And I get that he's a big name and I get that he's a big, he's probably going to be a big earn money signing in terms of average, uh, average annual value but that's not it's not like every contract is built by only its average annual value it's built by guarantees it's built by escalating uh base salaries and things like that like there are ways to backload the contracts bring him on a vet minimum deal for 2024 but then pay him 45 million dollars in 2028 like who cares nothing the saints would do right right yeah (laughs) and so like for me for me like that's the ones where like if i if i just wanted to be if I wanted to just be excited about a potential selection, yeah. you know what I mean? If I, you know, it, it, that would be the one that I would be like, yeah, okay. That that's the one that makes sense. It does need aligns and the contract is workable. Like the contract could be workable, yeah. especially at that position. Yeah. I threw out Von Bell yesterday. Just casually. Yeah. That's a good one too. But Justin Simmons is another, like it would make sense. And again, don't, count the saints out just because of xyz or whatever you think i mean any preconceived notion that you have just just put it aside right and of course we said simmons was talking to to marcus robertson at the hbcu legacy Bowl. that's right that's right they're on the sideline yeah they're kind of chumming (laughs) it up and so the ties go there between him and joe woods again i just wouldn't rule stuff like that off the table because they're not having marcus may lonnie johnson jr is not in the plan they do like jordan howden a lot as of right now, Jonathan Abrams not on the roster. JT Gray is not really – like he's more of your special teams guy, and mm-hmm. he can play there, but that's not really your plan. And so Tyron's here for two more years. 
the last thing they can afford is to have this back end go to the crapper, I guess is what right. I would say. And not that it would, because I really know that they love Jordan Hound and they love what he's able to bring to the table. He's still got some growing up to do. That's the thing. And he knows it. Like every time you talk to him, this guy is super smart. Oh, man. He's super sharp. He knows, like, even if you tell him, hey, man, you made some really good plays. I remember talking to the la- locker room. He's like, yeah, but I left some of this on the field. That's the type of person I want on my roster. And I think yeah, we talk about 100%. guys being uh, bought in and all this stuff. It makes sense. Howden's a guy that could be there, but Abram is probably the guy that say, okay, maybe we can get him. And then maybe if it's not him, it we can start looking at the Von Bells or maybe they look at Bell or, or Justin Simmons first. But, you know, this is a, an interesting time for this team. And, and again, last thing they can do is afford to have that secondary fall off. I think that's been their strong suit for a while now. Um, you know, we thought there would be some drop off from Chris Richard. We thought there would be drop off going from Aaron Glenn to Chris Richard, but that's it's right. only been a strength of this team for the past several years. And so I like Simmons a lot. I, I'd like Von Bell a lot, but of course the Saints are going to be a team that you just have to watch and they're going to be linked to plenty of names. They've been linked to guys like Jadavian Clowney. They've been in the, okay. the, some of those guys that you're like, Oh, I didn't think they would have it now. Have they happened? No, but it's possible. And yeah. so keep tabs on them. They work in the shadows. We'll probably know a lot more soon. Um, but <laughs> for this team, you know, they need a bunch of players. They need a bunch of stuff. They need, uh, a lot. And so they got extra compensatory picks. Mm-hmm. They're going to package those. I don't know if I have a hard time believing they're going to use four fifth round. Four fifth although, round picks. <laughs> although it would be interesting trade those and, and maybe you, you, that's not enough ammunition to get you into the third. I mm-hmm. don't think like you can't just say, no. Oh, I'm going to give you two fifths for a third. You might have to do like two fifths in a, a, a third to get in the third next year, mm-hmm. like or third next year to get into that conversation or something like that. But um, you know, for the saints, the needs are pretty glaring. I'd say it's it's wide receiver. Offensive line still is a, a major need. Mm-hmm. Safety position comes a little bit more. Linebacker, now they're going to need a backup quarterback. Where pass do you rusher. think they should start? Uh, pass rusher, of course, yes, mm-hmm. because we don't know about Peyton Turner. We don't know about what uh, – and speaking of, sorry, we're all over the place today, but rightfully so. Marcus Tappenport went to Detroit. Oh my, like, goodness. This guy oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Nothing against Marcus Davenport, but man, he didn't do anything in Minnesota. Injury problems. Like he's a hell That's of a player be. when he's healthy, but man, now he's back with Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn. But how about him going to Detroit? <laughs> That's wild. That's got to be like a veteran minimum deal, right? Like uh, there's no chance. Because they. Be. Put, uh, 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 Minnesota gave him thirteen million dollars last year. It's thirteen and a half million, I think is what it is. Yeah, it's crazy. And all that. Thirteen, thirteen and a half. Yeah, something. Yeah, like I sit just... on the bench and be injured. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, like the whole time, the whole time, like I, I have good friends that cover the Vikings, and the whole time it was all about like you know, it's the the potential is there, the potential is there. And yeah. I was like, oh, potential always honey, been there, baby. You sound so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so familiar. Uh, so I mean, goodness. I, so look, I, I hope it works out for him. I really do. I mean, he's 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 a, a nice enough dude and everything like that. But yeah, um, of course. he he has he is like just inches away from the annuals of you know Man. very like one of the most disappointing draft picks in franchise history. Especially if he doesn't if, if he doesn't even like catch on anywhere else, just like the the pay to get up to him with the two, you know, the two first round picks to get up plus the additional selection and then all of the continuous investment in them, the fifth, you know, the fifth year option, all this other stuff. Like all of it is just like invest, 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 and just got nothing back. And then he went to Minnesota, nothing going to Detroit. Let's see what happens. Uh, At least he'll be with some familiar faces in Detroit. And maybe that moves the needle a little bit. Yeah. And it sometimes it just doesn't work. And this just proves that, your, the draft process, of course, when you scout, when you do all this stuff, it is not an exact science. It is never an exact science. And some teams can find the gems. They can find the diamonds in the rough. They can do all those things. But look at Brock Purdy. I mean, Mr. Irrelevant. You know, nobody probably had him high on their board and stuff. I yeah. mean, it's just about – like even Jordan Howden, he was a, a day three pick. And, and same thing with like A.T. Perry. Those guys were some people that come in here and perform and do things. And, and so – it, it, 
sometimes you get more from those guys that are in the later rounds. And so I'm interested to see how that kind of works out, especially for this yeah. second year for a lot of these guys. Brzee is another one. Sal DeVere, you mentioned as well. Kendra Miller, I think, is primed for a really big year. It, you mm. know, of course, he's got he to looks healthy, so good. That last game we had seen smooth, looks so good. Smooth as the other side of the pillows, James would say. About <laughs> I forgot about um, that. <laughs> I know. One of my favorite Jameis quotes of all time. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's really interesting. So let's talk about another loss because we've talked about Demario, mm-hmm. We talked about Tyron. We've talked about some of the losses. But – Zach Bond, that was a disappointing one. I, I, I think yeah. we, I wrote about it. We talked about it. I said a 3-4 team is going to be the one that's going to look at Bond and pick him up. And by God, a Vic Fangio defense is moving to a true 3-4, and the Eagles picked him up. Yep. I just It was something that made sense. And it's unfortunate yeah. because, and you wrote a column about this, that it's unfortunate that it took the Saints so long to figure out where to best maximize Zach Bond. And so now you have to... And you you also threw out Leonard Floyd as an option. He didn't mm-hmm. obviously last. He went to somewhere else. Right. I I was oh, was rooting for you. I was like, man, I really hope <laughs> Leonard Floyd. But losing Vaughn is going to be a, a pretty big blow because a he was a huge key core special teamer, and then b they maximized him on the third down rush packages and they got away mm-hmm. from some of that that prototype that they normally deal with. But now he goes to Philly. How do you how do you compensate now for uh, losing Zach Bond and that linebacker spot, that room? You got to give that some real proper attention now. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things that you got to do, right? You have to be able to get your linebacker room together. Obviously, that's a big part of it. You got to be able to have the depth there. So I think you got to go to the to the market. One guy that I'm keeping an eye out on at linebacker is Eric Wilson. Spent some time mm-hmm. with the Saints in training camp a couple of years ago. Yep. They really liked him. He ended up not making the roster and then ending up in, I believe he was on, he might've even been on a practice squad for a second and then ended Mm -hmm. up being signed by the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers do want him back. So we'll see how it all goes, but he would be one that I would definitely watch out for. Um, uh, I've heard that like the Anthony Barr situation last year might've been a little bit more about the Saints than about Anthony Barr. So I don't know if necessarily that's going to be a good fit there. And so I think that the rest of it is, you know, you gotta, you gotta fill that room out. And so I think you do some of that with the draft, right? There's, you're not going to you're probably not going to see a first round linebacker unless no. like last year last year the Bills fell in love with a linebacker jump for him that could happen this year with one team that maybe really likes Peyton Wilson out of North Carolina State or something like that but he's really the only one that I could see that happening with outside of that you're looking at linebackers like second third fourth rounds like kind of the middle of the draft so that could be a potential trade up target things like that and then you've also got guys that you're familiar with Andrew Dowell could come back Ryan Connolly could yep. come back Ty Summers could Ty come Summers. back like you've already yep. yeah Yes, exactly. Yeah, you've got a lot of those guys you can come back to. And then we're not leaving Nephi Sewell out of the conversation on purpose. It's just that he's not expected to be ready for training camp, which right. which the next question is, is he going to be ready for week one, right? Like that would be the yeah. next big thing. And so we'll see what happens there. But, you know, they have to navigate around that first. So I think with everything that you have there with Demario Davis and Pete Werner, great. You've got nothing behind it right now on the roster until Nephi Sewell is healthy. So you got to add talent there. And then it's twofold because not only is it that, but when they started using Zach Bond correctly as a pass rusher, you know, the thing that he did, they got him drafted in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, He racked up like nine of his 15 pressures in three games. He had two sacks in the last five. Like when they finally started using him that way, you could, yeah, you could see the value of it. And then that's only the pass rush part. He was helpful yeah. as a run defender, and he was massively helpful when it came to scrambling quarterbacks that got out of the pocket. So I think you have to go and find an athletic pass rusher that can help seal your edge as well. Yeah. Could Foskey be that guy? Maybe. Could Peyton Turner be that guy? Maybe. Like, I get all that, but I think that going out and finding my new guy that I'm like, there's dozens of us out here uh, that are Josh Uche, Uche truthers. And mm. so, you know, there's that's one that makes a lot of sense to me. You look at a guy like Zach Bond who – uh, depending upon who you're asking, depending upon what you're reading, he's somewhere between 6'1", 225, and 6'3", 240. So take that for what you will. Uh, yep. But Josh Uche comes in at 6'3", 240-ish himself. And that's pretty solid. He's got the athleticism. He can get around the edge. He was used differently last year when his sack numbers dropped from 11 and a half to just under a handful uh, in New England. Plus, Matthew Judon was back. That was a big part of it as well. Love Matthew so like, Judon. Oh, my goodness, dude. And so uh, so I think he's kind of my guy now that I'm looking at as like, okay, there's your athletic pass rusher around the edge that also has the size that's close enough to what the New Orleans Saints like. But I think the loss of Zach Bond impacts you two different ways. Yeah. Fun fact, I did mock Matthew Judon to the Saints in the fifth round, like when he was wow. coming out. Like he was my favorite 
favorite rusher that like people were not really talking about. Yeah, I'm still a little bit bitter about that, but you know, I I just look at Judon. He's just a beast. He's one of those Man. players. He's just like a Lamar Jackson. I just love watching him play and just what he's mm-hmm. able to do. And you know, with Bond, you know, you look at the film. It wasn't always about the sacks. Just the amount of pressure he was able to get. Yep. Just that speed off the edge to throw off the tackles. Just something to watch about what he was able to do. And then, of course, when you play with the lead, it's easier for you to get the pass rush yeah. going because you know what they're going to be dealing with. And you got these big defensive ends on first and second down that are beating yeah. the heck out of these offensive tackles, wearing them down for, you know, 40 snaps. And then you come in yeah. for 20 bigger, I mean, smaller, faster, quicker than the Legs guy that's heavy. just gotten his head beaten in all game. And all of a sudden you're in the backfield in the fourth quarter. Like yeah. it's a good, it's a good setup, man. Like, yeah. oh man, I just wish that I wish that they would have just turned to it earlier sooner yeah there's no reason for that to the off-ball linebacker thing like i'll never understand that i mean i understand the size concern but he he never needed to be a full-time pass rusher he just needed to be a pass rusher yeah i mean and of course hopefully they can find that because again i think it's even more of an important need yeah i think the trenches for both sides are really what you have to look and and i know i caught a little bit or we caught a little bit of, of flack i guess or pushback last year or last week i mean last year probably last year too, but last week when we talked about the offensive line and the outlook looking better, it, we didn't mean the fact that that oh, means that no. they're all good and they should run yeah. it back. No, it's like, it's perfect. We're it's just perfect. saying they that have, they ain't got to do nothing else <laughs> yes, at all. Yes, come on, guys. <laughs> God, yeah, so clear that up too, but, you know, and I, I was looking here, I'm scrolling the ticker on, on you know, the Twitter verse and stuff, because uh, I'll never call it X, but uh, no. Darnell Moody. Darnell Moody, man. Moody off the board. Went to the Falcons, three years, thirty nine million dollars. I, I thought Saints could be a target, but man, he got he got paid. So yeah, some of these receivers again. I think it talks it kind of circles back to what we talked about earlier that you know some of these other younger guys are probably going to get some really big money. And Kirk Cousins now has another weapon. All the more reason the Saints are going to have to have a stellar secondary. I mean, this yep. is just part of more it, so. reason not to trade Marshawn Lattimore. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you mentioned that because. <laughs> That's a great one to talk. We look, we again, we talked about this for weeks. Uh, you know, Marshawn again, they 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 would prefer to keep Marshawn Lattimore. That's mm-hmm. there is this is not a CJ Gardner Johnson situation. This is not a contract problem or right. anything like that. The biggest thing is, you know, this team has as as kind of a we need to to make sure everybody's on board. And Marshawn, you know, I, I get it. I, I think if I'm Marshawn, I'm a little bit upset too with the way the past two seasons have played out. It's not his fault he got hurt. But with Marshawn, you know, there was a, another trade that just happened in the corner. Um, uh, who was it that just got traded? Uh, oh, Carlton Davis to the uh, Lions. Carlton Davis. And the price tag that he got, if that's the starting point, there is no reason that if they do trade Marshawn that he's not – more compensated the saints aren't more compensated than what carlton carlton davis drew in they're yeah. same age Lattimore is just a is a player of his own but you know I, I don't i don't get the sense that they want to trade marshall and Lattimore. i don't get the sense that they want to do it or should do it nothing is off the table but i think again you look at this team and uh, it can also maybe segue into this michael thomas stuff but you know this locker room mentality might have changed a good bit, and this this where they're trying to go this this year is kind of you're either on the ship or you're not, right? Yeah. And and I think yeah. that's kind of where it is. And now you can read between the lines, you can figure out what that means and stuff. But Marshawn's a really important part of this this team. And again, when he's on the field, there's just nobody really better, right? And Paulson right. had a, a good year, a really surprisingly uh, underappreciated year, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yadam played a good bit, and you know, there's moments where Yadam didn't do as great as it should. But look, there's no cornerback that's going to do perfect 100 percent of the time, or even have you know 80 to 90 percent. That's just not a common thing like what it was you know years and years ago. And so, I, I think with Sean, it's it's again, it's up in the air. But I think they can mend those fences of anything mm. that's wrong right now. I think that's what they're trying to do. And if it doesn't go their way, then yeah, maybe you start entertaining that, but they're not in a hurry to trade Marshawn if that was even on the table right now. Yeah. That's, that's, it's just to kind of give a little bit more detail too on what you were discussing with the, the draft compensation, the, so the yep. bucks traded Carlton Davis, a six round pick this year and a six round pick next year to get a third round pick in this year's draft. So yeah. it had it was Carlton Davis and some pieces 
to get a third round pick. So there'd be no reason that Marshawn would come in at anything less than that. The issue though, Mm -hmm. is that you're probably not trading Marshawn Lattimore before June 1st. You're not trading him before the draft more than likely, more than likely if you are trading him, you're waiting until after the draft. That way all that dead money doesn't accelerate into this season and everything. And so I, 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 that doesn't mean that they should do it though. You know what I mean? What's the, what's the Kai Harley thing? Just because you can, doesn't mean you should, uh, <laughs> and everything. And so I, I think that like th- the way that I look at the Marshawn Lattimore situation is that if, if the right offer is around at the right time and there's still enough reason to move him internally, then whatever, like you do what you got to do. But if you're able to mend that fence, I think that should be the first that's got to be the first thing. And I think it is. I think that's the first thing that you that you worry about and everything. Then you go from there and then you look at other possibilities or whatever. But I think like with Kirk Cousins now in the division and him being able to elevate weapons the way that guys like Desmond Ritter, Marcus Mariota, and Taylor Heineke were never going to be able to do. Drake London, now you got Darnell Mooney coming in. You still have Mike Evans it's, and Chris Godwin along with Baker Mayfield. And you got Bijan in the backfield, right? Like there's so much firepower now on these – Mm-hmm. On these NFC South teams, and in the Carolina Panthers are you know out there splashing around in the pool somewhere. You have probably the kiddie pool at this point. Yeah, the kiddie pool. <laughs> they got the they got the floaters on. Like, yeah, I see you, Bryce. Yeah. And so, like, you have all those things, but uh, it, or not, but and so I don't see why you potentially handcuff yourself over on the defensive side by shipping off quality talent. Especially when you still right now have to answer a big question in your secondary about who's going to be your starting safety next to Tyron Matthew. And it could be Jordan Houghton. Don't get me wrong. He played 66% of his snaps in some kind of deep coverage, whether it was in the middle of the field, cover one, cover three, or he was split in the field and cover two, cover four. But he wasn't utilized as much in the box. And so with that being the case, knowing that Marcus May played over 50% of his snaps down and closer to the line of scrimmage, uh, are the roles the same? And did they like what they saw from Jordan Howden when he did play that role? Cause he could have played it just as often as Marcus may, but did he play it as well as Marcus may or as well as they wanted or as well as a Jonathan Abram, maybe not. Right. So I think that there's some piece of that that has to be a part of the conversation too. And so I just, I have a hard time justifying for an organization, making things harder on yourself. I think you try to make things yeah. easier on yourself. That's why you work so hard to keep players in as opposed to being focused on the, the shiny stuff that's outside. So yep. keep the players in, make it easy on yourself. That's why the DeMario stuff never made sense in the first place. That it's was like so you, weird. If you would trade DeMario, which yeah. again, like I said earlier, that was never an option on the table. You're it's basically saying we're in rebuild mode. Like that's right. what you're basically saying is that we're going to rebuild this entire team and you trip it out. You wouldn't have done what you did with Tyron and you wouldn't have done what you did with DeMario. And I think right. with, with Marshawn, it's again, it's kind of the same boat and too is, I, I, I again, I think you should keep them. I think you mm-hmm. should be able to do it. And and they've got time to figure this thing out. But you know, when as we get closer into to free agency, which again, like I said, this doesn't stop. It's not like you just go a few days and then it's over with. Free agencies here until the end of the, <laughs> the league year, practically, or reserve future contracts and stuff. So, you know, they still have a, a ton of time to figure this out and. This is kind of hopefully going to set up what we believe the team is going to do in the draft. And, you know, you look at 14 and 45, it, it's it's tough. There's arguments yeah. to be made of why they should take an offensive lineman, why they should take a pass rusher, why they should probably take a tight end. You talked about that last week, tight end or wide receiver. Those are pr- pretty much things that are on the table. The only things they probably don't need is a running back. They're, they're probably going to be good with what they've got there. You know, Jamal's in the plans. Alvin's in the plans. Taysom's supposed to be in the plans. He's not yep. getting traded. It's just it's, it's just a weird time uh, of, of year, and it's always that type of stuff that comes out. Um, you know, again, there's things that are going to happen. You guys just got to stay the course, look mm-hmm. to it. It'll work. It's just not the timing anybody ever wants. It just never yeah. is. It's, the same yeah. it's, it's usually not. I mean, you yeah. should be used to this by now. It's been the you same way go out for there. years. Yeah. You want to go out there and make the big splash and all this other stuff. But the question is like, where do you make the big splash right now? And, and the, and, yeah. and, and, and are the big splashes off the table? No, not necessarily just because they sign them on, you know, just cause they sign, let's say that they let, let's use one of your examples, Daniel Hunter, right? Let's say that they take the time to measure out the contract, get it to exactly what they want to do, and they sign that contract on Friday, 
it's still a splash. It's still a good signing. It's still something that ends up changing the fabric of this defense. Just because they did it on Friday didn't make it less impactful than the fact that they did it on you know that they didn't do it on Monday. You know, it's not like every good player just all of a sudden is no longer available. There's still some outstanding right. players out there, like high level elite players out there and everything like that. And a lot of times the reason why that happens too is because as John mentioned, the legal tampering period, or as the NFL is trying to rebrand it, the negotiating period is not between player and team. It's between it's between player representative and team. And so it's yeah. not like so a lot of times what you have is a team or a player, they want to visit. They want that player to come to their facility. That player wants to go to their facility. Facility. They yep. want to meet each other. They I want to see if they're a culture fit, all those other things. You can't do that right now. And so sometimes yeah. these top top name free agents don't even want to participate in the negotiating period because unless the money's right because they haven't gotten the chance to really even go and see and visit and get to know and talk to and yada, yada, everything like that. And so sometimes that ends up being a bigger catalyst than the, you know, big money that may or may not be there the first day of the tampering period. Yeah. And you look at, again, uh, Daniel Hunter, again, because we just stick, stick with them. Think about this. Cam's probably two more years at best, maybe, I think. Mm -hmm. And you got Granderson. Turner's going to be a free agent. You don't know what you have with Foskey. Tano's, uh, I think, last year of his deal too. If you would structure it in a way where you say, "Okay, Daniel, we're gonna we're gonna not pay you as much in the first couple of years, and then we signed you like a five or six year deal, and then we start escalating even more on the third, fourth, and fifth year," it yeah. could happen. Yeah. And and, with and here's him, a and here's a big old signing bonus right off the bat, so that you did get, so you do actually get paid, but we just pay it over the course of five years. You know what I mean? Yeah, like. That's always what I've said about the Saints is it's always about the guaranteed money because a lot of these play, these teams will throw out money, but they don't have as much as a guarantee. So if you're looking at, let's say, a $100 million deal and you're going to get only $36 million guaranteed versus you're getting half of it guaranteed, I mean, of course, you look at that and you're still having – maybe don't get as much money in some aspects, whereas like your cap, the way it's structured and stuff you still would come out ahead sometimes with the more guaranteed money because you know that's something yeah. you can take the bank. The 36 with the extra money attached to it, with its options, roster bonuses. I mean, you see all these teams that are cutting players left and right it's because they have bonuses in it. And, mm -hmm. you know, which kind of segues me to this whole Michael Thomas stuff is yep. that obviously Mike was very upset um, because of some of the language used. And, and here's what everybody needs to understand about this is a, first of all, it was always designed that Michael Thomas was going to become a free agent. That was right. what last year was about. B, the whole language in his contract, if he's on the roster, I think it's the fifth day of the league year, he's guaranteed $119 million in bonuses. So this is where this void year stuff comes in and all this language and stuff. But look, Mike aired out a whole bunch of stuff. He said how he feels. And, you know, I wrote about Mike and all of his accolades in New Orleans because I, I said That's I don't the most think important his, thing, man. I don't think any of his recent stuff should tarnish or take away from anything that he's done in New Orleans. Because he was, if you didn't have Michael Thomas in his offense from 2016 to 2020 before he got hurt, this offense would have not been good. I, right. I just, I know Drew was here. It just would not have been the same, right? I just don't think. So I hate when teams have these bitter divorces or this bitter ending. And it's unfortunate because this is the kind of where it's going for Michael Thomas. And, you know, he's been a super important part of this team. He's been committed. He's been bought in. He's been dialed in again to get hurt is, is frustrating. And again, when Mike, everything I've learned about Mike, when he's not able to be on the field and do what he's loves, I, I think I would feel a certain kind of way too. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we, oh, do sure. what we have to do, I'd feel a certain type of way that I'm able to do yeah. it. So Mike, it's the same case. And, you know, we won't probably talk about the other stuff that was said, but, you know, it's just overall, I understand why Mike's mad and I understand yes. what, but we just want to clear up some of the reasons why maybe the language might have been put out there in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to, to think about it, there's a couple of different ways to think about it. Like there's the one side of it that is the, so the, the $119 million in guaranteed money. The reason why that happens is because believe it or not, void years have a money number, have like a dollar amount attached to them. You just don't know what that dollar amount is. And usually it's really high. It's like $40 million a year or something like that. And the reason why is because when you renegotiate a contract and you try to turn those void years into actual years, like what the Saints just did with Tyron Matthew and Mario Davis, you can't negotiate a rate that's higher than the amount that's already placed on that void year. 
And so if you just say, oh, we'll just throw a $5 million void year on it, and then it turns out that player is fantastic for you, you can't negotiate, you can't renegotiate to pay higher than that amount. And that player is not yeah. going to stick around for that. So you go up high, you do 40, <laughs> $50 million. And in that way, if you extend into those uh, void years, which was an option between Michael Thomas and the New Orleans Saints going into the season, if things would have worked out or going into yeah. this offseason, excuse me, you have to have that number high so that you don't cap yourself in terms of what that negotiation is going to look like. Then on the reverse side of it, the reason why the phrase release was used is because in order to facilitate the cap space, the contract voids, but the contract voids while also designating him a post June one release. So it's a little bit of both. It's 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 a voided contract with an extra hoop to jump through and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so like, so I understand very much like the language, the verbiage, all this other stuff, and how it can be confusing. But just to kind of explain why those types of things happen, like that's just kind of one of those weird things that happens with these these contracts sometimes. Yeah, and that's the point that we wanted to make is just to to explain a little bit why it, some things are the way they are in, in that aspect. And you know, they have three guys that are on void years. Jameis is one, Thomas mm -hmm. is another, and so is Andres Pete. And again, yep. I think he's going to get left tackle money. But it's interesting how this guard market has shaped up. I think guard cool. money probably would have been a little bit better in some aspects. So it, it's <laughs> it's it's a crazy time. And of course. It's not ruled out like, again, the Saints were always a team coming into this that, the, A, they were trying to focus on re-signing a lot of their own players, first and foremost, and then, B, then they're going to start seeing, assessing what needs to be put in. And, uh, you know, it's it's coming. It's coming. Yep. We promise you're going to see new players. It's, they have to. They don't have much of a choice. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's the same process every year. Restructure, re-sign, explore the market, draft keep exploring the market. Like it's, this is, this is the way that they do. It's all about the first thing that they're always about is restructure and retain. Those are the first two things that happen in every new Orleans Saints off season. And this year has been no different. And you left off a key important component, which is oh, to which piss off Nick Wright. <laughs> <laughs> the Ponzi piss off everybody, everybody that scheme. says this kick in the can. And I understand. And we've talked about this too. If it doesn't work, it gets under more scrutiny. But if it works, nobody says anything. Nobody's going to give you a pat on the back for it. And right. again, Saints are a team that hasn't made the playoffs in a few years. And so the pressure is on because you do yeah. need to start seeing dividends of this whole, whatever you want to call it, kicking the can down the road or doing all this. But a prime example with some of these contracts and some of the way this is, I mean, you're not going to talk about the fact that Cesar Ruiz and paying him when you did now looks even better because of how mm -hmm. much the guard market has increased. And again, if you spend a dollar a couple of years ago, that dollar is not going to carry the same weight as it does today. It just right. isn't, with, because especially when it comes to free agency, with a salary cap rising. I mean, again, teams are throwing out some stupid money right now, and, yep. and it, hopefully it works. I mean, that's the goal is you buy these guys, and it's supposed to pay off dividends, and a lot of teams are one injury away from it being horrible, and, and Saints are no different there too, but – it's it's a, a, a fun time because we're not even into the actual NFL league year. Man, we're just that, in it hasn't even legal started yet. Tampering. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about legal tampering. Legal tampering is it's about tampering? great AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ross, what else did we not hit on? I feel like we got most everything. Um, yeah, I think we got all caught up. I'm just trying to think. And of course, if you guys have any questions, please drop them in. We are more than happy to. I saw somebody had floated out this one. Check it. Sign Patrick Queen. That was an interesting one. That's an interesting one. That's very interesting. This is another one I was somewhat bitter about, is that Jawan Jennings got tendered by the 49ers at a second round. I I, I wanted him big yeah, time. and right. But after that Super Bowl performance, I just didn't see it happen. I was like, if I'm the 49ers, then uh, I am, am, am hard-pressed. Here's another one we maybe can talk briefly about. I like this one. Josh Sweat is up for... Mm. Our trade, that's the Eagles. Mm -hmm. I know Saints and Eagles, you know, Saints have had the best track history trading with the Eagles, but yeah, that's an interesting one to lot, bring up. <laughs> yeah, they trade a lot. So that's an interesting one to bring up is Josh Sweat. Uh, Irv Smith Jr., as one I wrote about it, I liked in this offense. And, of course, yeah. Hunter Renfro was another one too. But trading for one, we didn't really talk about. Could they trade? Do they have the ammo to trade? And, you know, what would that look like? Yeah, I think – like one of the things that I think is the most efficient, like one of the most efficient ways to build your team in the NFL is trading day three picks for veteran players. 
I think that yeah. is one of the smartest ways to go about building your football team. And we see yep. this happen constantly. Uh, and so if trading for Josh Sweat is going to cost you, you know, or not Josh Sweat, sorry, is that when Mont? No, yeah, that's Montez, Josh Sweat. Montez, Montez. Montez got traded last year. Or trading for the Eagles version of Sweat. Um, for me, it, it depends upon what that asking price is. It's not going to be a first or a second. And what kept the Saints out of getting into deals for the other sweat and guys like Chase Young at the uh, at the trade deadline last year might have been the fact that they had no mid round picks. They had no third. They had no fourth. And so, does having multiple fifths help? What would you rather? Would you rather trade two fifths to move up into the fourth in this year's draft, or trade two fifths to get somebody that's proven and done something at the NFL level? I'm the latter all the time. So I think that they have the fodder to maybe be able to do something, but what they don't have is the, they need to be able to control the language of the contract and build the contract, not based off of what was already built by the other team, but be able to restructure it, do it, everything that they need to be able to do. And so doing that or needing that, that feels like a free agency thing. Chase Young. Yes, exactly. And then. Uh, but if you're able to trade and get somebody on a deal that can, yet you can set up to work with, then I think it's a good move. But I don't think you're, I don't think trading for top talent and signing top talent are different. I don't think that those two yeah. things are different. So if you're not in the market to add top talent in free agency, you're not in the market to trade for top talent in the trade market. But if you yeah. can find guys that are reasonable and things like that, then it, I think it works. Yeah, I'd agree. And Chase Young, that's an interesting one to bring up too. I just, I don't like, I think he found a good home in San Francisco, but I think there was times where he just took plays off in some aspects. And I yeah, say that respectfully, that, I just didn't see the effort of what yeah. you probably should see from a chase young and it's a whole Ohio state guy. So, you know, that obviously gets people excited, but I just, I like, I could see it, but again, you look at the, the effort on the field in some aspects, you got to be here for almost all the plays. Right. And so yep. I think that's the only drawback that I see with a guy like him. That was a, kind of a risk. I thought that I had with Jadavian Clowney too. I think all the talent in the world, and I know that saints have, you know, kind of did their homework and stuff, but there were times, you know, up until last year, just before they just didn't seem like the player that we thought it would be. And so mm -hmm. you got to have somebody that's a game changer. It's kind of come in here and just do it. A guy like, you know, Hunter, he's a guy that is not going to really take plays off. Right. I think he just right. makes that big of an impact. And so, whether they get one or not, a big pass rusher, I know that they want to find a pass rusher. If they yes. had their pick, they'd get a pass rusher. If they had the money yes. right now, like if it was a big deal and they could go shell out money for a pass rusher, like big time money, they would go get one for sure. Yeah, yeah but, I completely agree. You know, it doesn't rule it off the table. But of course, this is kind of when you look at the cap and everything, this is kind of where they're at. And this is the reality of the situation. And so. Mm -hmm. They'll have to figure it out one way or another, but you know, uh, good questions, good feedback, good everything here. And man, Ross, we're already uh hour and ten minutes almost into this thing. Dang. Passes by quickly. Dang. Yeah. I'll just look at one last look at Twitter and uh, see if there's Make sure anything. Miss extra. anything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, besides Jameis going, so that's uh the really the other one, but you know, and we already discussed that. But you know, again, it's um Oh, Michael Burton. Speaking of fullbacks, what we talk about, Michael Burton going back to the Broncos. He was another one yeah. that was insane for a bit. That COVID yeah. scandal, COVID scandal thing against oh, the yeah, Lions. That, that was insane. Yeah, yeah him going back to Detroit. him going back to Sean. Man, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, exactly. Or sticking so, with Sean. Sticking. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we'll see how it all plays out, guys. We just again want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you know, hit that like and subscribe button. You guys have been awesome as far as uh, the support, and I know we're just in our infancy stages right now. Um, and so, again, we really appreciate it. We're just two guys that just love covering this team and talking about this team, and that's hopefully what our goal is: is just to bring you more and different insight and perspective of how things run. And you know, as we get closer to the season, it's only going to get more and more uh, interesting and exciting for this team. And you know, we got training camp out in California. That's going to be super, super fun. Oh, and Ross is super excited because he gets super to get close excited. to home. And of course, before we get out of here, Ross, I want to give you a chance. What's going on in the world of Locked On? And what's oh. got what you got coming up on the Saints news? Oh man, free agency, free agency, free agency. That that's yeah, all it nothing. Is right now. It's just, it's, yeah, nothing. it's just it, it's just keeping up with everything that's going on. So like, if you need a daily download to make sure you're like all caught up, like Locked On Saints will be there every morning. John and I, and Bob and uh, Kyle, all doing some great work over at over at uh, Saints News Network as well. 
keep you up to date. And I love having this kind of more long firm converse, long form conversational sort of, uh, you know, structure here at second on saints to be able to keep you up to date, keep you entertained, uh, as well. You got anything planned over at saints news or, or are you, are you, are you kind of riding the free agency wave too? <laughs> I mean, I've probably got a thousand things planned, but you know, it's uh, crazy because uh, yesterday I'm like, man, this is just a, I forgot how crazy this time of year is. Yeah, it's just it's all the things that are coming in. You know, you're trying to, to get information. You're trying to, to figure out what what's going on and where this team is going and all this stuff. And it's just it's a, a never it's a never ending. It's like a, a, a heavyweight fight. that just goes the distance, you know, yeah. Rocky uh, every round just goes the distance. Right. Yeah. And, and that's just how it is. Nonstop action. And so it's a busy week. It's going to die down a little bit. But I think that's when the Saints are going to come up to play. But, you know, of course, keep up. I put my my tracker up for the year. Um, and so it's going to have everything that's updated everything you need to know, all the stuff, like, I, again, I'm not going to say it's the best, but it's pretty damn good. It's pretty, really, really informative for those who need it. So check it out on States News Network. But guys, again, we appreciate you tuning in on this Tuesday morning, a little bit different because we usually are doing the Sunday evening thing. We tried it on during the day because we have that kind of time so far right now. And so maybe we'll do it again. Maybe we'll stick back to what we did. So on behalf of Ross Jackson, I'm John Hendricks for second and saints. Thank you guys for tuning in and have a good one. Be good people.